Welcome to the Growing in Love for Life podcast, where it's all about saving and strengthening your marriage and creating the relationship you really deserve and want to have. And now, from growinginloveforlife.com, relationship and marriage coach and best-selling author, your host, Liam Naden. This is episode 49 of the Growing in Love for Life podcast. Hello everyone, Liam Naden here, and today the title of this episode is called How to Change Your Marriage Situation and Your Life. So today we're going to be talking about something that to a greater or lesser degree affects us all, and that is how do you really change the things that you're not happy about in your life? Now specifically, of course, we're talking about your marriage situation or your relationship, and I'm assuming that you're not happy in your marriage, which is why you're listening to this. Maybe you're facing the prospect of a divorce and you don't want it to happen. But whatever it is, if there's something you want to change in your life, I think you're going to find the ideas that I'm going to share with you today to be both interesting and valuable. You know, the whole issue of how to make changes in your life, and really to the the extent to which change is actually possible, is something that has fascinated people for probably as long as people have actually existed. I mean, the question really is, if you're not happy with your life, is it possible to change it? And if it is, how do you change and what do you change to get the results you really want? So these are all the questions we're going to look at today, and I'm going to give you some answers as well. And I think by the end of it, you're going to have quite a clear idea of how you can create the marriage and the life that you really want to have. And not only that, but a lot more quickly and easily that you thought you could as well. All right, well, let's get straight into it. But before we look at how to change your marriage situation and your life, there are two important questions we really need to answer first. And the first question is, what is really the cause of everything we have and experience in our life? Another way of putting this is to say, how have you ended up in the situation you are in right now? And by the way, although we're specifically talking about your marriage situation, it can be applied equally to any other area of your life as well, including your health, your finances, your career, other relationships, and really even your overall happiness. So why is your marriage the way it is? Why are you facing divorce if you are? Why are you experiencing the particular problems you're experiencing? And why are other people, particularly your spouse and your children, why are they acting the way they are? Well, I can tell you the answer to all of these questions, and it's simply this. Everything in your life right now, including your marriage situation, is 100% the result of choices you have made up until this point. Now this is so important I'm going to repeat it. Everything in your life right now, including your marriage situation, is 100% the result of choices you have made up until this point. Now you might not be believing me when I say this, but in this podcast as we go along I'll be showing you that this is absolutely true. Everything you have or don't have is due to your choices, and specifically your choices of your thoughts, your choices of your beliefs, and your choices of your actions. And we're going to get into that and about what all that means shortly. But that's a heavy load, isn't it, to, to realize that you are 100% responsible for everything you have in your life. But it's vital that you understand this, and the more you do, the more quickly your life will change, and you'll have the things you do want rather than the things you don't want in your life. All right, now here's the key to understanding this concept, and it is take some time and answer this question for yourself. What am I thinking and believing, or what have I thought and believed, and what actions have I taken that have put me in the situation I am in right now. Think about that one again. What am I thinking and believing? 
or what have I thought and believed, and what actions have I taken that have put me in the situation that I am in right now? Now I really suggest you think about this and spend some time thinking about it, and you might want to turn this audio off and really just spend a few minutes and focus on this. Maybe get a pen and paper out, write down the question, and start making a list of the answers that come to you. So the question again, what am I thinking and believing, or have thought and believed, and what actions have I taken that have put me in the situation I am in right now? Now this is so important to do. So, And if you actually do this and come up with a list of answers, and believe me it's probably going to be quite a long list, then you're going to develop a whole new understanding about your life and your life situation, and I guarantee you'll be amazed. You'll start to see very clearly exactly why you are where you are, and why all of the things that have supposedly happened to you, how you're responsible for them. So please don't skip over this. This is a vital step. Take the time right now to answer this question. Come up with your own list of answers to the question, what am I thinking and believing, or have thought and believed, and what actions have I taken that have put me in this situation that I am right now? Okay, that's the first question that's very important to ask. And assuming you've answered that question for yourself, here's the second important question, and it is, why don't people change? I mean, if we really are 100% responsible through our thoughts, our beliefs, and our actions, for everything that exists in our life, then why do we stay stuck in a situation that makes us miserable? Now, this used to puzzle me a lot, and I think there are actually four main reasons why people don't change, and see how many of these, if any or if all, apply to you. Now, the number one or the first reason why people don't change is they don't believe that by changing their thoughts, their beliefs, or their actions, that it's actually going to change their situation. Now, if you've done the exercise from that first question, you'll have discovered that it is actually true, but people haven't done that exercise, and they don't realize that they are 100% the cause of everything they have in their life. So they think it's the circumstances, the people, the events, all the things outside of them that are controlling what they get in their life. So, and they think that even if they did make some changes, they don't think it will be enough, or the whole picture on getting change in their life. So that's the first reason why people don't change. The second reason is, they don't know what to change. People think, well I, would, I don't know what to do. Maybe I can change my life, but I don't know what to change, how to get a different situation. So in that case, I won't do anything. And that's what happens to people. But of course, what to do is simply about finding out what to do. It's about looking for the right answer and carrying on looking until you find the right answer. You know, it's not at all complicated, but many people seem to think because they don't know the answer to something, that that alone is the reason for not looking for the answer, so they don't do anything. And I think that's tragic, but it applies to many people, maybe even to yourself. All right, the third reason why people don't change is they simply don't have the commitment to change. Now, whatever you want to call it, whether it's a lack of willpower, a lack of energy, a lack of determination, people are simply not committed to doing whatever it takes, for however long it takes, and make the changes necessary to get what they want. You know, many times people actually do believe they can change the situation, and they know what to do to change but they still don't do it. And that comes down to a lack, for whatever reason, a lack of commitment. Alright, that's the third reason why people don't change. And reason number four? Well, they don't know in advance whether their changes will work or not. In other words, people are afraid of making mistakes. And oftentimes, we are afraid of making mistakes because we believe that by doing something, we might actually make things worse. The truth is, of course, 
that by doing anything it's not going to make things worse. At the very least you're going to learn, you're going to get clear about what is, is and isn't effective and it will have on one level a positive result. And in fact we could talk a lot about mistakes and I will in a future podcast but this is the reason why people don't make change. They're, un- they're not sure if it's going to work. They're afraid of the uncertainty. So these people don't change until they almost have a guarantee that their actions are going to give them what they want. And of course, that's not the way life works, is it? There are no guarantees. The only thing that's guaranteed is if you don't do anything, things aren't going to change. Okay, so they're the four reasons why I believe people don't change. And now that you realize the importance of you changing, and the reasons that might be stopping you, and nearly everyone else for that matter, from changing your life situation, including what's going on on in your marriage, now you're in a very good position to know exactly how to change. And change in ways that are going to have huge benefits, not only for you, but for all the other people in your life as well. So here is the way you make change in your life, massive change. And I've broken it down into a six-step process. And this is this six-step process is what allows you to change pretty well everything in your life situation, including your marriage, and get you the outcomes that you really want, which, of course, in marriage is a happy marriage, stopping a divorce, whatever it might be. You can use this six-step process to create the change that's going to get you the results that you want. All right, well, step number one, and we've actually already covered this in some detail, is to take 100% responsibility for everything that is happening or has happened to you in your life. And, of course, that's about realizing it's all the result of your thoughts, your beliefs, and your actions. No one else, nothing else, it's you. It's what's going on in you. That's very, very important. Is step number one is to take responsibility and realize that that is true. All right, step number two is to become very aware of what your thoughts, beliefs, and actions currently actually are. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means you actually have to start living as a thinking and self-observant person. And, you know, sadly, very, very few people are. There are very few people who actually do a lot of thinking. So a good place to start is to build this as a habit and ask yourself on a frequent basis, what am I thinking right now? What am I doing right now? And what must I believe to be thinking and acting the way I am right now? In other words, what's going on in my head? You start to become a very observant person about what's going on inside you. Now let's look at this from a practical practical point of view with an example of how this actually works and what I mean by becoming aware of your thoughts, beliefs and actions. So we're going to use the example of a practical situation that harms many marriages and it could be even affecting you as well. And that is, imagine if you and your spouse have a problem with arguing a lot and you find you're always bickering, you're not seeing eye to eye, you're just not getting on and it's creating disharmony, resentment and perhaps even worse. And you know this is a, a major contributing factor to divorce and people uh, wanting to have a divorce. And a lot of the time in this situation you might not even know why you get into arguments or fights. You might not even know what you're, why you're having an argument and that makes things even more tiring and frustrating. I'm sure you'll agree. So if you're in this situation, and and I'm suggesting it probably is an element in your situation, um, but even if it's not, just imagine and follow it through here and you'll see where I'm going. But if this is the case in your situation, ask yourself, if you're arguing a lot with your spouse, what are my thoughts, beliefs and actions that are actually creating this situation? So you're not saying here, what are my thoughts, beliefs and actions? actions that are contributing to the situation because remember step number one was taking 100% responsibility and there's a subtle but big difference about saying what is contributing and what is creating my situation 
And it's very important that you use this word creating. So what are my thoughts? What are my beliefs and my actions that are actually creating this situation? And it's a good idea to ask yourself that question and start to make a bit of a list. But some of the things that will are commonly on people's lists and will probably be on yours will be thoughts and beliefs such as, well, my spouse is wrong and I have to show them that they're wrong. And another one is, well, I'm not going to let my husband or my wife get away with what they said or did. Another thought, it will make me feel better if I make sure that I have the last word. And another thought might be, if we just keep talking, we'll be able to solve this problem. Now, all of these thoughts are going to mean that you're going to have arguments. They're all contributing to arguments. So this this vital second step is just simply having the awareness that you have these destructive thoughts, beliefs and actions. Very, very important. All right, so step number three. Once you're aware of what your thoughts, beliefs and actions are, the ones that are not helping you but are actually contributing to the negative situation, step number three is simply decide on an alternative thought, belief or action that is actually going to give you the result that you do want. Now, if you're not sure what that thought, belief, or action might be, one place to start is by having a look at your list of the ones that are making the situation more negative and turning them to the opposite. So another way of saying that is to ask yourself, what is a better alternative to this thought, belief, or action that is negative that I would need to have if I wanted a solution to this problem? So, for instance, instead of saying or thinking, my spouse is wrong and I have to show them that they are, an alternative thought would be, it really doesn't matter who's right or wrong and I don't need to show that I think I'm right. Another one, instead of saying or thinking, it will make me feel better if I make sure that I have the last word, the alternative is the opposite, which is, I'm the better person if I choose not to have the last word. And there are other great beliefs and thoughts to have when it comes to arguments, such as, I choose not to get into an argument, no matter what it is about. Or, if an argument starts, I will simply walk away. Now you can begin to see that these thoughts and beliefs are going to create a completely different set of actions from you. And as a result, you're going to get a completely different scenario when it comes to whether arguments happen, how often they happen, and how severe they are. I mean, in another way of putting it is, if you refuse to argue, arguments are not going to happen. (laughs) All right, so that's about deciding. That step number three is deciding and figuring out what an empowering and positive alternative thought, belief, or action would would actually be. And step number four, taking it to the next level, which is to change your thoughts, beliefs, and actions from the old negative and destructive beliefs and actions to the new ones, the positive and constructive ones. From step number three, now that you know what is going to create a positive effect, you simply have to do these things. You simply just replace those negative ones with positive ones. And voila, inevitably, you're going to get a positive result. Now, I know this isn't necessarily that easy. It is quite simple. But it's not that easy, I know. And actually in my marriage programs, my Stop Your Divorce and Save Your Marriage program, I do go into a lot more detail in showing you how to actually do this in in quite an easy and effective way so that your actions do change dramatically and so do your results. But this is one of the main reasons why you can turn your marriage situation around and save your marriage in a short period of time by using this particular technique. So start small Try and make changes perhaps in just one or two areas and see if you don't get some very positive results. That's what it's about. It's about changing your habitual thoughts, beliefs and actions to those that are going to give you the result that you want rather than continue to lead you away into where you don't want to be. Well, step number five is to monitor your results and adjust them if and where they're necessary. So once you start acting on these new thoughts and these new beliefs, 
Ask yourself, is my new thought, belief or action actually working? Am I getting the result I want? And you'll be able to see that clearly. So for instance, does this particular thought that I'm thinking right now, or that I think is the right thought to have, does that lead me to do something different? And is that helping to reduce or limit, eliminate our arguments? Now you're going to know the answer to that, and of course you, you might not get the new thought, what you think is the right thought, belief or action, you might not get it right the first time. So if you don't, try modifying your belief or action and see what effect that has. And step number six, which is really as important as all of the others, step number six is to persevere. Now once you hit upon a thought, belief or action that you know is going to contribute to a positive result, keep doing it. You know, sometimes positive change happens very quickly, but other times it doesn't. Other times it takes time. And very often when we create a change within ourselves, we meet with resistance from outside of ourselves. And this is particularly true in a marriage where there is conflict. I mean, your spouse may resist you. If you start making these positive changes, if you start acting or doing things in a way that they're not expecting or that they feel that perhaps they're no longer in control of, they, they're not only going to resist you, but they might even do things to try to get you to go back to your old ways. So you have to stand firm. You have to show, not only to them but to yourself, that you know what the right thing to do is and that you're going to keep doing it until you get the, res the right result. And when it comes to saving your marriage or eliminating problems for you, from your marriage, such as arguing, once you start doing and thinking the right things, it really is simply only a matter of time until you get a positive result. It really is inevitable if you really and consistently do the right things and stop doing the wrong things. And, and that's what following these the previous five steps is all about. And that's pretty well guaranteed. So step number six, make sure you persevere. Okay, so these are the six steps to changing your marriage and your life quickly and effectively. And I really encourage you to apply them to your own situation. And obviously if you want more help on these and other aspects of saving and strengthening your marriage, I go into these in a lot more depth in my two marriage saving programs. My Stop Your Divorce program, which is seven days, and the Save Your Marriage Relationship Transformation Program, which is 30 days. And you'll find all the details about those on my website. So this, this whole issue of change is so important. And before we finish today, I just want to add six further points. These are things to keep in mind and things to really think about as you consider the importance of all of this. Not only to your marriage, but to your life, your happiness, and to the happiness of, really, of everyone else around you as well. So these are th six things to keep in the back of your mind. The first thing is to remember, change doesn't need to be difficult, unless you think it is. Unless you think change is difficult, it doesn't need to be. And remember, if you think change is difficult, or if you think change isn't difficult, they're both beliefs. That's all they are, beliefs. So choose your beliefs well, remember. All right, the second thing is changes within you are what create changes outside of you and not the other way around, which is what most people think. You have to start on the inside. You have to change what's on the inside if you want to change what's on the outside. You don't start by changing. You can't change the outside until you've changed the inside, what's going on inside your head. So change within you creates change outside of you. That's the second thing. The third thing is, there is always a solution available to you for every problem you have. You just need to find it. It's simply a question of finding it. Point number four, if you haven't got the results you want, it's because you don't have the right information. Point number five, you and you alone are the one who decides whether you'll look for and find the answers for changing your marriage and your life situation. And because of that, point number six, whether or not your marriage and your life change is 100% up to you. 
All right, you know, the truth is that very, very few people ever change. They ever change anything about their life. Very few people understand how to change, and even fewer do anything about it. Most people, you know, they they blame their circumstances for where they are. But don't you be like that. Be one of the very few who knows, and you do know now, but be one of the very few who knows and applies how to create change in your life and create for yourself the marriage and life you really want and deserve to have. So I hope you'll use this information that I've presented here to do that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a member of the Growing in Love for Life community. Remember, if you want more help from me, check out my website. I wish you all the best. Really work on changing yourself into the, per- the great person that you truly are. And I look forward to talking with you again soon. Bye for now.